my God. Oh no. my God. Fucking move on with the episode or else I'm going to murder you. I want to be very clear. Uh-huh. I'm wrong. Yes. Let's go home. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. Wow. We are excited. Wow. I just uh, shoved a glass of espresso and a glass of espresso is the right uh, amount okay. into my face. Right. Where did, it, where did it go? Where did it go? Let's do this thing. It's a it's a 9.32. Wild Till 9.32, baby, let's go. False advertising once let's again. Let's go. You know, Sometimes I feel like I'm more or less tired during the week. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Okay. How about you? Yeah, I feel okay. What day is it today? It's Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. It's Groovy Tuesday. It's Groovy Tuesday. It's Groovy Tuesday. King. It'll always be Groovy Tuesday after that episode. We only release things on Groovy Tuesday. It's only Groovy Tuesday. I have a call to action. Oh, okay. (laughs) Big, big call to action. Okay, okay. I didn't run this by you. I, I is it is it that so I asked um, Jeremy to bring up the 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 Reese cups and I just realized that these are expired. So we do have new Reese cups downstairs. And I also just want to settle this before it's even an issue. Um, Reese's. There is no fucking such thing as Reese's. It's Reese's. It's nope. Reese's pieces. Listen, and I will die on that hill. Couple things I know. I will die on that hill. Couple things I know. Okay. How you say that word alone at the top there? Reese, that's right. Reese. Yeah, right. And if- And so Reese- Nope, let me just walk okay. through the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Reese, I see that, Reese. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if Reese were to own something- Reese's. Reese's. Yes. The 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 orange- So you've already, branded, you've already made the statement no, no, no. for why it's no, Reese's. No, no. I know, the, this, this thing I'm looking at right here, mm-hmm. that's Reese's. That's Reese's cups. That's Reese's pieces. That's Reese's. Reese's is just. It's. It's. It's always going to be that. So where did you learn? You just unlearned how to read. Listen, Reese's pieces. Reese's pieces and Reese cups. Reese cup. Reese cup. Reese's Reese's cups. cups. Now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fucking move on with the episode, or else I'm going to murder you. I want to be very clear. Uh huh. I'm wrong. Yes. Thank you. But I'm I want. Not, I want to clip that audio bit so that I can actually like wake up to that every morning. So I have a button I could follow. I've you around been more with it. correct on other things. Hmm. No, I'm wrong. Okay. But I don't want to change. Oh, that's fine. That's I mean, fine. It's like a piece of my childhood. Okay. Like a Reese's piece of my childhood. Oh my god! It makes me want. It makes me. It makes me nauseous just hearing it. It's yeah. just so wrong. Listen, I don't. I mean, it's better. What's than your what, call of action? What's call of action, Jeremy? I have a goal. You have a goal. Before listen, I would love to get a pop and ass Discord. I would love to, and I think we are, uh-huh. I think we are. Uh-huh. But first, uh-huh. there's a milestone I wanna hit. Okay. I wanna hit 200,000 subs on YouTube. What are we at? Like 180 some. Oh, we're close. We're, we're right there. But so I maybe, do it by we the maybe of- do it like a thing, it's like we, we'll start the Discord if we hit 200K? We'll, we will post our sex tape on Discord the moment we hit 200,000 subscribers. So I would hope that we would um, value our sex tape a little bit higher than that, because that is wildly achievable and attainable. Okay. so. I, 250. So, 250. Yeah, right, 250, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to hit 200,000 by the end of this year. I think so too. I think it's doable and I think uh, we'll put some motivation behind it. Discord happens at 200,000. Done. So if you're, you know, let's say you've got a dormant YouTube channel. Or a friend. Or a friend. An aunt. I, whichever one's more like A likely. sister. Subscribe. A grandma. Just subscribe. I always think about like, if someone enjoys the podcast and they just told, if every single person told one person to listen to an episode, like that's such a crazy but only concept. Like, like only cool people, only nice people. We have such a nice audience. I just I don't wanna like, like the more people that come in, the more often we're gonna finally get someone who sucks. That's true. We have like the nice, everyone who comes to the show is like, why is your audience so nice? I don't know. I mean, I mean, let's just, I don't even wanna complain about it because it's great. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just like, I feel like we don't, deserve how nice people are sometimes to us. I think we deserve it. <laughs> All right. Well, we deserve everything then. No, it's just people are nice. Yeah, no, totally. People so are nice. smash that subscribe button. In fact, oh I might God. even see if we can try and throw that in the um, pod link. It's clickable if you were on Apple or Spotify or Oh, right, to send over to YouTube or whatever. Podbean. Yeah, Podbean. How's Podbean doing? I don't know how our numbers on Podbean are doing. Mm. It looks like I Apple wasn't even thinking about us on Podbean. Spotify. I was just like, how is Podbean doing in general? Yeah, Podbean. Who do you think? Um, where do you think is we're listening to more? Spotify or Apple? Mm. Spotify? No, Apple. Really, Apple? Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I mean, like it's it's not that far off, but right. Yeah. But it's it's 
Anyway, yeah. um, okay, so this is also the Halloween episode and we are not in costume and I just wanna apologize on behalf of both of us, but if it makes uh, anyone feel better, I finished uh, altering my costume today and Jeremy's costume is supposed to show up at some point tomorrow, tomorrow- Don't I have three versions? Wednesday, so here's the issue, oh. okay? Here's the issue is that it's, uh, so Jeremy and I, alongside probably everyone else in LA, if their costumes arrive in time, uh, are being Squid Game. And so I'm 067, my costume came, it's adorable. Which I one was 067? The hot Asian. Got it. With the little brother. I don't, let's see, I only hmm. remember. Hmm. You um, actually you actually seem to grab onto that and remember pretty quickly. So the no, I don't remember. link there. No, hmm. I don't remember her. I, I will say, I remember exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And she has one of the coolest vibes on Instagram I've ever seen. Oh my God. Well, she's like a certified model. Like she's, she's hot. Whatever she is, but like, she has, you know, people just like, like you see a photo You know what she has, baby? You know what she has? What? That Asian persuasion. I don't know if that's applicable out of my <laughs> mouth, but I will say that like her, like she just like her vibe was like very like, it's it, it's as if she's like been, maybe she's been a model for years. I think she But has. the way that she presents herself is like, whoa, you're a pro. Totally. Yeah. So I'm 067. And so mine came as like an oversized tracksuit. And, so and why couldn't I be 067? Uh, because the tracksuit is, um, you know what it is, is that I, I, it's Halloween, right? It's Halloween. And I can't really mm. be a hoe in the red. I guess I could, I could have yeah, made it work. Cut the butt cheeks out. Yeah, I could have made that. some, some um, assless chaps. <laughs> so anyways, my tracksuit came today and I sewed it and altered it into cute little booty shorts and a crop jacket. Did you now? It's adorable. It turned out so well. So I'm gonna I'm look so like the it. like garbage man. Yes. And you're gonna look like a hot, Oh, 67. Girl. Yes, yes. Neat. Yes. You literally, I like when I think about what we should be as a couple for Halloween, I think about you first. I just Thank want you, you to know that I, I think about you first and what you would be comfortable in and what you would not feel embarrassed to wear and what you would be willing to wear for an entire night and your comfort um, physically and mentally. And I appreciate that. Uh -huh. But you know, good and well, that the reason you think that is because if I'm not comfortable or I don't want to be there, or I don't want to wear it, I'm not quiet with my complaints. No, 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 no. I just am not someone who's like, mm, I have such a, so many things in my mind. We'll just keep them to myself. Yeah. Ever. Maybe something that we could work on. No. Maybe no. something that we could work on. I think it's kind of like, a, at this point in time, my friends just expect me to say what's on my mind. Um. Okay. Maybe you could keep that with your friends then and not actually around me, but we can work on that. So. What happened was is that we have, um, I've got the tracksuit. And so I ordered three of them from three different sellers on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, one, I and I ordered the first one like at the beginning of, of October. And, oh, really? Yeah. And I went to go check on it um, maybe about a week and a half ago. It's sitting at a Long Beach right now. 100% sitting in Long Beach. Yeah. And uh, Long Beach. Okay. Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Long Beach. Warren has a weird thing with inflections on, on two, like, when there are back-to-back -back words that kind of go to be together, she just kind of like has a fun spin on them. No, but I, I can't, I genuinely, in my mind, I couldn't tell you which one's right or wrong. There, I mean, to be fair, none of them are right. It's just one is the way that everybody says it around here. <laughs> and, and there's the other version, which is the way that you uniquely say it. I don't think you should even make it a geographical thing. Like when you say like around here, like I think that it's everywhere. It's just a me thing. I was really just trying to be as nice as possible by right. saying only you come up with the no, weirdest way okay. to say words that are very simple. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. So I ordered the three <laughs> versions of it. My first one was like lost in transit, like apply for your refund now. So I was like, oh Got my it. God, fuck. So I ordered two more and I'm waiting for the refund for the other one, ordered two more. One is still MIA and the other one showed up at the end of last week out of nowhere with no tracking information, no delivery like uh, notification. And so yours, same thing. I ordered one for you at the same time forever ago, beginning of uh -huh. October, same thing. Uh, told me to apply for the refund proactively because it's not gonna show up. Got it. So do we think the same like manufacturer? I don't know. I don't had know. Too much so you okay. apparently have though two of them coming tomorrow, but I'm just nervous that like, you know, when it says it's coming tomorrow, but then it's like delayed mm. or unexpected delivery. Yeah. So it says it's shipped and says arriving by tomorrow. But there's no 
tracking info between then? Yeah. Nah, no good. We need we need a mayday. mayday. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. This is arriving by Friday and shipped. And so the other sketchy part is that, um, you know, I've ordered, a th I've got a few things on pre orders this one sweater and it's like arriving by November 2nd, shipped, and it's got a photo of the, uh, the product. Okay. The other ones just have no image available. Mm. So I don't know if that means the product listing is now gone from Amazon, but we've oh. got three, uh, no image available items arriving by tomorrow and then one more arriving by Friday. So I think it's potentially three of your red suits and two more of my track suits. Got it. Non Tyler Shore. So anyways, so, if this episode comes out and you did not see a photo of Jeremy and I in our Squid Game costumes, you know exactly where it is. It's on a ship in Long Beach, Long Beach. Or just stuck in China somewhere. Right, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm excited to see what you come up with when none of those show up. Oh my God, we're just gonna make you a tech bro. Like you're gonna wear your crypto.com sweater, you know, on Friday for our party if nothing shows up. I'm gonna be a tech bro. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I could be, um, I could participate in ho whole lower wing. You wanna be whole lower wing? Yeah. I got some costumes. You want some gumball boobies? Gumball boobies aren't the worst thing it's I've, I've Yeah, I've gumball, we can today. do gumball boobies or we could do um, just gumball nippies. That's pretty fun. Gumball nippies? Gumball so nippies. Just two gumballs across the nips? Yeah, one gumball each. Well, I'm gonna be honest, I did, this is inspired by um, the challenge that I did with Zach the other day where he had glitter nippies, but gumball hmm. nippies also sounds pretty fun. Gumball nippies. Gumball nippies. Okay. It'd be a gumball dispenser. Uh, look, I'm not gonna count anything out until, well, we ran out of options. Right, so our party starts at like 8.30 p.m. on Friday. I said we so. should live stream the whole thing. Yeah, that's uh feels like a liability. It's just sell dollar tickets. That's a, that sounds like a liability for sure. It could be fun though. Could be fun. The, you know, there's some influencer out there who thought that was a good idea for like, when like live stream first came out. They're like, oh, oh we should God. live stream the party, it'll be great. Was it Periscope that was like the, the very like mobile friendly live? Um, It definitely was one of the first, yeah, like before the first it got ones. bought by Twitter. Right, because yeah. there was like you now, but that was like very much like not, yeah. that, that felt like more like desktop situation. There's always um chat roulette. I uh, went on chat roulette more recently than I would like to admit. And it was 10 out of 10 did not enjoy and saw so many penises. The only thing that confuses me about chat roulette is the reason that I feel like it was like popular 15, 10 years ago. I don't even know how long ago was like, oh, it's just dudes dicks. taking their dicks out. Yeah. And girls not ever actually liking it. Yeah. just. Being like, oh my God, I can't believe it's still gross. But they haven't, it's been like a decade. Still gross. Still gross. Still gross. Haven't figured out how no. to flag hot dog nor hot dog. No, yeah, I don't I, I really, I don't know what's going on over there. And I think that we should just leave Chai in its own corner of the internet and just lock it away and just keep it Did there. you want to like stop by WikiFeet before we move on to the, the real meat and potatoes of no, this patty? No, 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 no. All, all right. of those, all of those are in the same group. All right, great. Let's get to the dirt. All right. So I asked you guys on Instagram, uh, basically I opened up a free for all. Sorry, pause. People are being so funny and nice and sweet and also greatly like receptive to your mother. And I just think it's hilarious. Oh my God, mom DIY. She, again, her performance was impeccable. I mean, one performance is impeccable. Yeah. The end product was fantastic. Agreed. It's just his, uh, the warm and fuzzies, yeah. but also entertainment. Gail adorable in her yeah. Craftopia sweater. Shout out mom DIY. Shout out mom DIY. <laughs> um, so I asked you guys on Instagram, basically a free for all on questions, uh, requests, things that have sustenance and sustenance, substance, sustenance. Or some sustenance. Or some yeah. sustenance, yeah. have substance and depth or um, just simple questions. It's free for all, whatever you- Free for all, Free do for it. all, yeah. So um, our first our first uh, submission is from Corn Diddy himself. Oh, good. And he would like to, us to talk about butts. 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 So uh, thank you reader for the submission. Mm -hmm. um, butts. Butts. Uh, do you consider yourself an ass person? Yeah. Really? I don't really like uh, when, if I'm attracted to a male, I'm like, am I a dick person or a butt person? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like for guys, it's like you- for, I'm not sure anyone's a dick person. I don't think so either. I, I mean, maybe, no, I just don't think so. I don't think so either. How come I got the ugly anatomy? Yeah, um, it's not to say that it's, it's, no, it's uglier. It's definitely uglier. No, that felt kind of personal, but that's okay. We'll work <laughs> on it. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like, Mine, um, uh, the amount of times that I have gone up to Jeremy or just not even gone up to Jeremy, but just like exclaimed at some part, at some point of like the day, it's just like, I, know it's I just cannot believe that you have something that hangs off your body. Like, it's just so weird to me that there's like an extra like flame. <laughs> like, it's just so crazy to me. It's like, it's like having, 
Yeah, you see that? Yeah, for audio people, you are that missing was, out that was on, a compliment. A, on a lifelong or a very lifelike representation that Lauren is visually putting forward. <laughs> Imagine what an elephant trunk looks like. But it's just so like. crazy to think yeah. about how like you have to think about another extremity. We don't really think about it. it no, just, I know, but like- it's, It comes like, with you. To me, like when I, like it's just so crazy. Like when you put on pants, when you sit, when you have something thrown at you, like when you are warm or cold, like you have an extra extremity basically. Is, is it like phalange the right word or like extremity or like, uh, like I don't even Member. know. Member? Mm. It's all weird. I don't know. It's all weird. Yeah. I, anyway, so you're a butt girl. So yeah, I don't know. Got I just, it. Yeah. How I, many of your um, significant others yeah. have had a wagon? Uh, I would say three to four. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Three to four. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I think so. And maybe four to four. I don't know. To be honest, I didn't really, I feel like I don't, I can't remember at all what my first boyfriend's butt looked like. Wasn't it? Should we send husband? him a text? Ask? Yeah, wasn't it? See what's going on? He's one of the the um, only exes that I never, ever saw after we broke up. Like just never, even like with both of us living in my like mildly small to average hometown, like right. we just never crossed paths. I don't, I wish that I could say that was the same for a lot of the people. Yeah, I just- I think when you fuck as many people as you have, it becomes oh. nearly impossible. Okay. Uh, hmm. What I was thinking was, it, uh, there are some relationships, I feel like you can't imagine a world when you're in it that they're like not best friends mm -hmm. and you just become not best friends. It's like crazy, life moves on. Life moves on. Yeah. And it happens. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so but, butts. I don't know, Zach, did we cover the amount of butt that you wanted to, you, so this is really unfortunate because oh, I know the answer to this is that I was about to be like, Jeremy, are you a boob guy or a butt guy? Butt and guy. he's going to say boob guy, but guy. he had to transition to be a butt guy because I have no boobs. I, I will say. Mm. <laughs> what Jeremy, you, you will say what? Despite the last thing you said being true. factually true. relevant and true, mm -hmm. I do think that as I get older, mm -hmm. I'm steering away mm -hmm. from the shelf. From the shelf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also, you know, just thinking about you in particular and just how uh, perfectly proportioned you are. Mm. I just, I mean, that's really all I could think of. Mm. Is there a next question? Do we have more? Or is this, mm. this is where we just gonna sit on this the entire time? Not quite the save I was looking for, but- um, Who's honest? <laughs> Life can get busy as hell. And with the holidays, it can get definitely even busier. And Lauren and I will be traveling quite a bit up until then and work has been absolutely insane. And with all that adding up, it can be very hard to stick to a healthy way of eating. And that's why we've been loving HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers convenient contact-free delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the family. And by family, that means me, Jeremy, and then Moose, Moose as well too on floor duty, mm -hmm. um, on floor mm -hmm. vacuum duty. It's true. The recipes are easy to follow and quick to make with steps and pictures to guide you along the way. So even Jeremy could could do it, could whip up some could whip up something really, really good. He hasn't yet, but he's gonna. But I've I've been thinking but about he's it. Gonna. I've been thinking about but it. But he's gonna. I've been thinking about it. HelloFresh helps to cut out the stress of going to the grocery store and makes cooking at home easy. Not only are the recipes delicious, but they also have something for everyone to make sure that their dietary needs are met. Eating healthier has never been easier with low cal, carb smart vegetarian and pescatarian options every week. And no matter what you choose, every single recipe is packed with fresh produce sourced directly from the farmers. I just made their sweet and spicy chicken stir fry the other night and it was a hit. Mm. It's a hit. Mm. Honestly, no, <laughs> I think I hate it. It was delicious. <laughs> Honestly, now that I think of it, I haven't disliked anything we've made so far and I've been feeling like a straight up chef. All right, Lauren, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Go to hellofresh.com slash wild914 and use code wild914 for up to 14 free meals and three gifts. I love free gifts. Love gifts. It's funny, there are all these gimmicks that promise a great night's sleep. I just think it's funny. I just think it's funny. I just think it's funny. I, think it's funny. <laughs> I don't care what kind of toppers there are or how heavy a blanket may be, it's lipstick on a pig. Pig. If you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep will be terrible. It's that simple. That's why I recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. Purple has the gel flex grid. It's super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. We've mentioned before that we tend to both be hot sleepers, one more of us than the other. So this you, match- it's you. You're super hot and sweaty, right? It's you? Yeah. Between the two of us, it's you. Yes. Right, okay. Just uh -huh. want to clarify, just so want to clarify. This mattress has been a game changer for me. Yeah. yeah. Me. Just clarify. Hmm. Purple mattress is also bounce back as you move and shift, because one of us definitely does move and 
It's you, shift. right? I just, I just want to clarify. I just want to be super clear. They're talking about you here. <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll never have that I'm stuck feeling people get with the memory foam. You guys, this mattress has helped our sleep so much. Having my neck, shoulders, and hips cushioned while my legs and back are supported has helped me feel like I'm actually getting quality sleep. I wake up feeling refreshed and ready to start my day. I was waiting for you to say like your, your legs were sticking together because of, well, sweaty stickies. I don't, I don't have the sweaty stickies anymore, so I don't know what you're talking about. Seriously, guys, getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress, which is what you get with a Purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash wild10 and use code wild10 for a limited time to get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash wild10, code wild10, for 10% off your order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash wild10, promo code wild10. Terms apply. Okay, well, let's move on to something a little bit lighter. Okay. Uh, really, that's a, yeah, it's a heavy hitting topic. It, it's a heavy hitting one. Okay, yeah, yeah, something a little bit lighter. Um, so cheesecake and why it's the best kind of cake? Well, because it is. Jeremy and I both share a love for, is that your number one dessert? That's my number one dessert for sure, hands down. There's very few, th- like, to me, cheesecake is like a, it's not something that needs to be gourmet. Mm-hmm. And in fact, I like my cheesecake nearly plain. It's a little bit psychopathic. Like I, I, I don't know. Okay, once again. I like a little whipped cream. Uh-huh. That's it. I don't need you to, to drizzle it with a bunch of shit. Fruit, chocolate, mm-hmm. Oreo. I mean, like I'll eat all of those things. I yeah. will, but I prefer a fantastic light piece of cheesecake with a- uh, A smattering of whipped cream. A smattering, yeah, yeah. You don't need to be so shy with it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I am, um, I'm, I'm just, I'll eat any kind of, I think that if I, if I had to choose, it would either be like a strawberry cheesecake, like something mm. like, like with heavy fruit right? or like an Oreo cheesecake is pretty slapping. You are lactose intolerant. I am lactose intolerant. When are you going to accept that? So I've stopped eating yogurt every day for breakfast because I, I had this concept and I wanted it so much to be true <laughs> that if I were to just eat a little bit of dairy every day, uh-huh. it would help the enzymes in my body um, just produce. Right. I mean, I have heard that if you stop eating something altogether- That's true. You just, yes. you lose the ability to yes, digest, to digest it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's a hundred percent true. Okay. So I will never be able to cut dairy entirely because when I do want to eat dairy, then you die. And so I have tested that and confirmed that. I will never go back. But it was like, okay, maybe I shouldn't like make a point to eat dairy. Like every, every day. single day. Yeah. Um, and so I think that has uh, done well with my digestive tract. Okay. Um, I started taking a pre and probiotic. So that's also been a so great step in the right direction for does me. Does anybody else's significant other do that thing where they get a piece of advice from their significant other? <laughs> I know they exactly They ignore it for going. years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And then one day decide like, oh, actually I'm gonna stop ignoring that due to their own fruition and then just continue on with it. Cause that's what Lauren does. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there, it was a pre and probiotic thing that kind of hit that off. I don't know how many years ago I was like, oh, you have digestive issues. You should try taking some pre and probiotics. And you were like, no, I took that once and it made me pregnant for 20 years. And by pregnant, I mean, I meant that I was wildly bloated, like could have been- You had a 10 pound child in your stomach, you said. I could have been six months pregnant, probably seven, honestly. Were you being hyperbolic? Yeah, but- No, Uh, Jeremy, I'm not kidding. Like I was unwell. (laughs) I was okay. unwell. <laughs> I feel like you have a tendency to, to over-exaggerate sometimes. Okay, fine. Five and a half months pregnant. Okay, fine. I'll, I was, I'll take that. I was like, I'm not kidding. It was I, like, you know when- um, um, I can't wait to hear this. Violet, Violet from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh, I hate this scene. Uh, when Violet from Willy Wonka blows yeah. up into the blueberry, that was me after taking too much- I can't watch that scene. Really? It makes me feel icky on the inside. Huh. I don't like it. Really? And yeah, I have to get, I have to walk out of the room. I'm excited for the new one they're filming with uh, Tim- Timothy David Shamal. 10 out of 10. Timothy Shamal. He has about a, an army of fans, so you better figure out how to say it. Oh my God, bitches love Timothy. And as someone who like has always found baby face guys like pretty cute, for some reason he just doesn't do it for me. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's because you're almost 30. Could be it. Yeah. Could be it. Could be it. Could be it. Could be it. How old is he? Doesn't seem like he's close to 30. Really? No, he seems very young. I thought he was great in Dune though. He was great in Dune. Timothy, Timothy. Okay, he's 25, 95. That's actually older than I thought he was gonna be, to be honest. 25 years old? Yeah. Okay. I think 25 is a good age. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, by the way, if I get hit by a semi truck tomorrow, my full blessing for you and Timothy Chamolay. Cham- 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 no, it's okay. Cham- Timothy Cham- How tall is he? Cham- <laughs> Cham- 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 Cham-
Fuck, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, because there's an accent aigu at the end of his Oh name. yeah, accent aigu, that's right. <laughs> and one that goes up. Ye old accent yeah. aigu. I took French twice and do <laughs> well all the time. That's the one that goes up, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the one yeah. that goes up. Um, so, so uh, sorry, just to, to wrap that, to button that up. Cheesecake is your number one dessert? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that mean if we get married, we should do a cheesecake instead of a wedding cake since we don't really like cake that much? Um, I mean, we'll see what's all the rage in 2034. Gail is gonna jump through this computer screen and, and just 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 take you send out. The, send the test squad? Yeah. Okay. The test well, squad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would be down for these these things. Um, oh, actually here's a related a related question. So um, about, at a hypothetical wedding, what are your thoughts on moose attending? Love it. So there is this, here we go. So I saw a thing on TikTok <laughs> where there is this new business and they had so many doubts at the beginning, but their whole business that they dog sit your dog and go to your wedding with your dog. And they're just a permanent full-time dog sitter for your dog to attend your wedding. Why do we need a business for that? Well, who who would, who would I mean, actually, Kelsey. you know what? Yeah, Kelsey would do it. <laughs> but like half of our Kelsey friends, would do it, yeah. it, assuming we're not getting married in the middle of like uh, two streets that lead out into oncoming traffic. Right. Moose would just wander between his best friends. Yeah, no, you're so right. In you're fact, so. you know what we should do? Take the next level, mm-hmm. all dogs are welcome. Oh my God. You know what though? Like that would be wonderful, but then I could just see like the bloopers of there a dog, of there being like a dog shitting in the background of like wedding photos and stuff like that. Pretty cute. Someone would slip on poop on the dance floor. Not a big deal. Like, and then there'd be like dog throw up like, on the memories. table. And then memories. Like, a dog would eat like Unique. a chicken bone or something and it'd be like a whole emergency. Okay, okay that's a problem. <laughs> that's a big problem. It's a problem, it's a problem. Like Martha getting some poop on her shoe, not an issue. She'll be okay. Should be okay. Anyway, Tucker great, eating chicken bones. Great business though, yeah. if, uh, if you don't I have I'd love to know what the rates family. are. I mean, personally, I would do it for free if it was my business. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, Cause yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about making a career shift. Right, yeah, yeah. me too, me too. Yeah. Fucking sign me up. Yeah. Um, okay, so big fan of that. Love that. So glad we're on the same page. Uh-huh. Um, this he's is- He's gonna be a great ring bearer. <sighs> he'd be so- I mean, he's not gonna walk straight. Bearer. We're gonna no, call him, he won't walk at all. We'll have to have so many treats. We would just we could just put him in a wagon and someone could roll the wagon up. That, that could work. That could work. That yeah. I think that might be the only That option. could work, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is so niche and you won't know anything that I'm talking about, but I need to just clear this up. So if someone asks, is pizza pizza lit or no? I need to settle an argument on this and need an Ontarian opinion. So pizza pizza is a chain pizza fast food restaurant. I've had it. You have? I've had it, yeah. Oh my God, what did you think? It's fine. To be honest, I can't remember if I liked the pizza. Like I, I ate it all the time and I think I liked it, but there is a garlic dipping sauce that slaps so motherfucking hard. And I think about it, Often, I think about it very often, how I haven't had anything similar in so long. Have you been to any pizza place and ordered garlic sauce? It's not the same. Okay. It's not the same. What makes it so good? I um, I don't know. Secret sauce, secret pizza pizza sauce. I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you if I like the pizza or not. Like I think it's fine, but I don't remember there being any special, like special affinity towards it, but the sauce, the garlic dipping sauce. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, okay. um, as a Canadian, that is my opinion. As an Ontarian, that is my opinion. I hope that settles your argument, and I hope that I uh, that we're on the same side. Real quick, Sparrow or Pizza Pizza. What? Sparrow or Pizza Pizza. Sparrow. S B A R R O. Oh, Every I've never, ever? I've never had Sparrow. Really? Yeah. I know. I know which one it is. It's it's S B A R R O. I've I've yes. seen it before, but mm-hmm. I I've never I've never um partook. Well, when you do, let's uh-huh. we'll circle back. Okay. Do they have um? Do they have um um If you're going to quiz me on the menu, uh, I don't know. They they what's oh god, what's that like thing? It's like a pizza pocket. It's like a giant calzone. A ca- calzone. Yeah, calzone. It's a very standard dish. Yeah, I think yeah. I think maybe I've had a calzone from Sparrow. Okay. I I've had calzones from Sparrow too. I'm I'm not a calzo kind of cal- <laughs> I'm not a calzone. Also, I thought it was calzoni for the longest time and I'm very sad cuz calzoni sounds much better than calzone. Calzoni? That yeah. actually sounds more Italian. That's what I'm saying. Calzoni yeah. sounds better. I, uh, hey, I'm, Tony, I'm just, let me get a, a calzone. A calzone. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Calzone sounds better. Yeah. yeah. I like how every Italian person is just in the mob actively. Yeah. Right. In my head. Same. Couldn't same be thing. more incorrect. But in my mind, I just think the Godfather. Right. Or and they eat calzones. The Sopranos. Hey, cause I'll, yeah, calzones. calzones. Yeah. I you know think what? we should petition have petition to, make to it, yeah, yeah. rebrand. It should be calzones. Calzones. Not a fan of the calzone though. It's like the same thing as like the deep dish pizza. And well, the calzone. You're not going to get anybody to change their name for their dishes if you immediately follow up with, not a big fan of the calzone. Well, maybe the calzone is a little bit um, less stuff on the inside. 
That's the whole point of the calzone. Yeah, but I want a little bit less stuff. So but calzone ask- out, calzone can be XL stuff and calzone can be like light to medium stuff. Okay. That's how I'd like to petition moving Let's that forward. Let's get in the zoni. All right. And the zonies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so maybe maybe we'll do um, maybe we'll do something a little with something a little more depth. If you had to start a restaurant, what type of restaurant would it be? Something dog friendly. There's apparently this new um, place in LA opening. It's like beers and barks or something. I think I might be making that name up, but it's something similar where it's an outdoor bar mm-hmm. that's also a dog park where you can also mm. get snackos mm. and um, alcoholic beverages. It's a great idea. That is my fucking dream. That is a great idea. That is my fucking Cause we don't really dream. have like the same, like like Shiba Inu cafes or the, the Husky cafes. Oh, like the we don't really Shiba have that. Cafes. Like America in their stupid health code. Oh, uh, I know. But like Japan is so much cleaner than America. So like, I, I feel like we're just, cause they've got cat cafes here. So I think maybe that we just are like slacking on it maybe. Do we start a dog cafe? Yes. I'm quitting tomorrow. Perfect. I'm quitting. This is my two weeks. This is, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Are you quitting too? Are we going to be zero income? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Got it. Absolutely. He's going to break it to Moose that he has to um, not go to boarding school anymore. Okay. Well, we have to work enough so that Moose can go to boarding school. Okay. Got it. Well, then you should keep your job. It's actually not boarding school. It's daycare. Sure. Whatever. Yeah, it's like day, yeah. regular day school. I get it. Uh, okay. So here's something controversial that I'm, I can't wait to see how you answer. Okay. Great. So you and Jeremy's uh, five least favorite dog breeds and why? <laughs> Let's start some shit today. <laughs> we'll go back and forth. You can start. My least favorite? Yeah, your least favorite. Oh my God. Well, go ahead. okay. My least, least favorite, we share. Okay. You trying to drag me in on this? <laughs> Lauren, you- we're, we're pretty in line with which what kind of dogs we don't really like. The small, yappy, always perpetually dirty looking yep. white dog uh-huh. that hates everything besides its owner. I don't know what breed no, that no. is. And sometimes they actually hate their owner too. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. But the owner, it's, it's, but the owner thinks that they love them. They're like, oh, yeah, she does so that. Cute. Yeah, I'm just like, no, it's not cute. It's a, it's a white crusty breed. White crusties. White crusties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's you know, the West though, Highland White Terrier, which I love. Oh God, I love a Westie. And this is the West Highland this crusty is, ass dog. No, this dog. is the white crusty, not yeah. to be mistaken with the Westie. Yeah, Westie's fantastic. Oh, love a Westie. Best fan. Um, I, I do see a lot of slander around white crusty dogs, even by what white crusty dog owners, that they know that there is a general uh, consensus that the white yeah. crusty dogs are not super friendly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that probably takes a cake for me too. Um, and I just wanna say that we, I, I literally love dogs with all of my being and I've just been forced and put in this position where we do have to rank our least favorites. Like, but let's do this. Let's do um, the least three favorites of each, not five each. So like bam, 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 like. Oh, I was thinking five total between both oh, of us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my Got God, it. I was like stressed to do five yeah. each, right, Jesus. Um, oh, you know what? In in fourth place I have, oh wait, no. So White Crest Dog comes first as our least favorite. Yes. Yeah, so second place would be the Puggle. The Puggle? The Puggle. What's wrong with the Puggle? So I, my first boyfriend had a Puggle that was so mean. Not all puggles are mean. Not all puggles are mean, but I have a bias towards a puggle now. That's unfair. I'm sorry. That's unfair. That's how I feel. The puggle was really mean to me. Lauren. The puggle was so mean. Okay, I'm having a really hard time if I get my next one. Okay, so the puggle is number two for me. All right, I'm gonna say it. Uh Piss everybody off. Oh, here we go. I think I know. Oh shit, I'm nervous. Oh my God, this is our most controversial podcast yet. I have never met a kind, loving, not actively selfish, existing Uh poodle. Oh, I knew. I thought you were going doodle. I thought you were going doodle, but we go poodle. I've met doodles that I liked. Yeah, I've met doodles. Your Your sister is a doodle. She's okay some days. Your sister is a doodle. Stop calling her my sister. <laughs> She's your sister. She's adopted. She is your mom. She's adopted. She is your mom's other child. She's so adopted. what does that make you? She's adopted. Your adoptive sister. She's adopted. Berkeley is your sister. She's adopted. And I need you to accept that. She is adopted. <laughs> and I was adopted first. So that still makes her your sister, Jeremy. I was the first- um, uh, Child in, in the home. I was the first to be adopted in this home. Okay. Okay, she that, came after. That still makes like, her your sister. Yeah, fine. No, uh, it's, it's, I have not met a poodle that I have like yeah. genuinely had a connection with. I- 
<laughs> and I can tell you right now, there no, are a lot of dogs that have a genuine connection I, with. I agree. No, I yeah. actually haven't met a poodle. I, I, to be honest, I haven't met a ton of poodles, but the ones that I have met are really standoffish. Yeah. Not that friendly. I, the problem is this. I am forcing the, the type of dog I want right. onto their personality, which is unfair. Mm -hmm. But totally. we're asking my opinion of my least favorite dogs right now. And I'm only giving you the fact that I haven't had one. I bet there are some very affectionate poodles out there. And I'm sure there are some great puckles out there. Well, that was just unfair the way you characterized okay, that. Okay, well. That was just unfair. <laughs> And now all crusty white mean dogs mm. are crusty white mean dogs. We, I mean, I mean, yeah, like that's I can't argue. I can't argue with science. <laughs> that's just a literal fact. It's the other ones that I'm like, mm, okay. I, you know what? I, I think the crusty white dog owners too are the loudest about understanding, accepting like the crusty white dog, yeah. uh, just like community. All right, go ahead. Oh my God. Hmm. See, uh, so my next my next one I think is the meanest, but not necessarily like the not cutest. So I want to separate ahead. those two uh -huh. things. Uh -huh. So in in fourth place, I have the Chihuahua. I, I mean, knew it would be Chihuahua. Knew it. Yeah, because uh, I've seen some really cute Chihuahuas. Don't get me wrong, I've seen some really cute ones. But God damn, those things are mean. They are so mean. There's got to be nice Chihuahuas up there. There's got, and that's what I'm saying. There's nice dog breeds Has and to all be. breeds. The same Has way that like people want to categorize pit bulls as like being mean and aggressive, like. I'm doing the exact same thing. There's gonna be some thing. of the comments that says, they are more prone to being aggressive and I knew it because I had someone bite me. I'm gonna say, shut up, Sally. And then I'm gonna say, I feel that same way about chihuahuas. Yeah. Um, no, but like Moose is legitimately, legitimately, I've had to like rip a chihuahua away from Moose because they are so damn mean. You know what it is I think though, is that I think when people get a smaller dog, there's less pressure from just like society yeah, and people around it. them to train them. Yeah. And so sometimes like, that's why like the little dogs can be so yappy because yeah. like when a big dog barks can be alarming, even if they, you know, they're play barking and they're happy or whatever. Right. So I feel like bigger dogs usually have a little more attention from their owners towards training. I mean, if, if you had a German shepherd in the middle of a, a lunch area that was yapping and yes. screaming and being as aggressive towards anything else as some, of the breeds we've mentioned earlier, when they're in their worst behavior, yeah. it would be very alarming. Totally. Like you'd be asked to leave. Exactly. But yeah. if a chihuahua, a chihuahua, you just, you see a chihuahua and it's just yapping. Um, You're being a little unfair. I am? Yeah. Oh, You're I'm, being a little unfair. Just protect, I love how my opinions are unfair, but yours aren't. I Finish this up, fifth place, who is it? <sighs> um, I don't know if I dislike any of the dog breeds. I, I, you know what? I can't think of one either. Yeah, like I don't have another one. Like if I was, I would be like, there really isn't, and like even the poodle, I just haven't met one yeah. that I know is like up to potential. Mm -hmm. Mean, yappy white dogs. They take the cake. Yeah. They can just actually have the whole category. Well, also, why are they always white? Well, I mean, I think that that breed, like I think it's like typically a Shih Tzu mixed with some other like things. And I think that it's like a wow. common- Don't let Remy hear you. What? Don't let Remy hear you. Uh, Remy knows that I don't like Shih Tzus, but I love Daisy and Momo. Got it. It's okay. it's very clear. I, I tell that her I tell it to her so many times that like Daisy and Momo are some they get a of pass. the yeah, they get okay. a pass. They All right, got it. Get a What's next? I used to think my skin goals were unattainable. The amount of money that I have had to spend on dermatologists prescribing me new creams and face washes that just didn't work for my skin is just unreal. I can attest. I heard about it all. Um, so expensive. It gets extremely frustrating when your skin doesn't feel at its best. And personally, it really affected my self-esteem. Thankfully, I found Curology. So whether you're trying to take control of your acne or if acne is no longer a top skin concern, fine lines, dark spots, occasional breakouts, or even clogged pores, Curology will customize a prescription formula with three active ingredients picked for you to tackle your skincare needs. We know that age comes with aging, aging in numbers, getting older each year, well said. which is something that I am actively trying to avoid. And I made sure to note that fine lines and dark spots were a main skin concern right now. After you answer a couple of questions online, Curology will match you with a licensed dermatology provider who gets to know your skin. And if it's a good fit, you'll get a customized prescription to address your skin needs. I, 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 should we talk about how this is basically a time traveler? You just go back in time. Just go back in time. Yeah, Curology, the time traveling company. <laughs> I'm kidding, please. That, that, we're just kidding about that. But realistically, I do love their cleanser. It kind of leaves my skin feeling fresh and smooth, which although like there's definitely some other benefits, I kind of just like feeling fresh and smooth, but you know, that's become a staple in my personal bathroom counter. And if you want to take control of your acne or the dark spots or breakouts or whatever your concern is, you should also go to check out the powerful skincare of Curology today. Go to curology.com slash wild for a free 30 day trial. Just pay for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y.com slash wild to unlock your free 30 day trial. See curology.com for all the details. Tilly's.
The holidays are approaching. I repeat, the holidays are approaching. All right, I'll chill out. Anyway, we all know how stressful holiday shopping can be, especially some of us who like to save it for the end. It's like a little fun little game huh. that we just play for ourselves huh. to see how close we can get to the fire. I don't then, know who did that last year. But the end product was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Anyway, finding the perfect gift for someone sometimes takes a little bit of you know work. And well, what's a better gift than something you know the person will use every single day? And that's where Raycon wireless earbuds come on in to take away all of your gifting stress. I have been absolutely loving my Raycon earbuds. And I actually gifted these to my aunt and my dad who are both now a big fans. I've converted them. They would make the perfect gift for anyone in your life. I wear them when I work out or work through emails or even when I wanna just like tone Jeremy a little bit. Um, so I, they, they work really well for that too. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Anyway, the Raycon earbuds offer eight hours of play time and 32 hours of battery life. And they are very, very comfortable. And with an improved rubber oil look and feel optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, they sound, look, and feel great. They also have a built-in mic, so you can take and make calls while they are in. And boy, do I love to walk up and down the halls of this house and make sure that Lauren knows just how many calls I take in a day. I super love that as well. Well, it's a good thing you have your own pair to tune me out. Raycons give you three different listening modes to fit your needs. Pure mode, good for listening to podcasts and mostly to our podcast. Yeah, I, thought that, I thought we talked about them. The pure mode's only right, for, for the Wild Till 9 podcast. Right? Yeah. Pure mode is for listening to Wild Till 9. Yep. Um, and then we've got balance mode and bass mode. Plus they're half the price of other premium audio brands and they sound just as good. Go to buyraycon.com slash wild today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off for your first Raycon order. But hurry, this offer is only available for limited time and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon.com slash wild to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash wild. Anyone who drinks wine knows the options are limitless, which is why finding a wine I like can be hit or miss. I am a very, very picky when it comes to the type of wine I drink. I usually stick to the same brand and type, which can get really boring, but trying new wines is sometimes just like too risky because if I don't like it, I throw it out and it's, it's just like a big waste. Well, no, no, no. It goes back in the fridge for about a <laughs> four day period. And then I and say, then I forget about are it. we done with this wine yet? And, and then, then we it gets thrown away. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Very important Sorry, step I left there. a few steps yeah, out. That's okay. But now that I am a First Leaf Wine Club member, I only get the hits. That's because experts at First Leaf who know my personal palate send wines I love right to my door. There's always something new to discover. First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. You, not anybody else. You. And not only does First Leaf introduce you to a ton of new wine, but each box continues to get better. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns a bit more about your palate. And because of this rating system, First Leaf is able to update your preferences based on what you've already tried. First Leaf is such a cool club because it delivers wine right to your door. Whenever we get a shipment, it's like a nice little surprise waiting for us. Sometimes Jeremy and I even have our own little wine tastings with each shipment. Turn up. It's been, it's been such a fun way to discover new and exciting wines. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash wild9. That's six bottles of wine for just $29.95. And free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash wild nine. Um, okay, wow, D truly our most controversial podcast we've ever done. Yeah, yeah, I don't and think I'm a little it, yeah. stressed about it. Yeah. You wanna hop into politics, um, like <laughs> vaccine distribution. Uh, um, okay, here's one, we're gonna, we're gonna take a hard left here. Okay. Is it offensive to buy a sex toy that's bigger than your partner? Oh, you should answer this first. I mean, I don't have a penis, so it's not offensive to me. Right, but like, would you be? I would be worried about it for sure. If you bought a, a sex toy bigger than me? You know what? I guess I would only be worried about it if I knew that my partner was insecure about their dick size. Right. You know what I mean? Like if right. we had a little little baby, 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 I would be worried and a little um, hesitant to buy something bigger. Right. Because then it would insinuate that you weren't being Satisfied. Satisfied. What was the word you were gonna use? I was gonna use fulfilled, but then I was like, this is maybe a little fulfilled. too literal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, about your mom's not here this week. So um, would, as as a penis holding member, penis having member, penis having member. <laughs> this is going really well for me over here. So I'm the member? The penis is the member. Penis member having human. Penis having human. As the owner of a penis. Owner of a penis. Yeah. 
Would that offend you? Um, would it offend me? Yeah. No. Okay. What other? Wouldn't offend me. Oh no. I guess my my question would be: like, How much bigger are we talking? Well, okay. Like I think I don't, I don't know. There was no context, and I don't know how in depth we want to get with this. Let's let's throw a few things out. Well, because I feel like I feel like most. I mean, I don't know how intense the like the, the range here is. Right. So I think if you go for something that's like cartoonishly big, right. I feel like that's not something that would ever make anyone self-conscious. They'd be like, oh my God, like I, what? Yeah, I guess that's where my head's going. Like yeah. I would I would be more, I feel like I'd, I would notice it more if it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, huh? That's, that goes, that fit, really? Also that's enjoyable? Like <laughs> what? I think I'd be just more like, oh my God. But not self-conscious. No. Okay, so if you had an average size member uh -huh. and it was just a little bit bigger that they bought, would you be self-conscious? Uh, I don't know. Like an inch bigger. A little girthier. Man. I think you would be. I think then I would. I think you would too. I think I'd be like, I, and I, to, the problem was, I probably wouldn't even say anything. I just yeah, like, you know, you wouldn't admit it. One hundred percent, you wouldn't admit it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I, I feel like sex toys mm -hmm. aren't you. I mean, I feel like they're usually like really small or large. Is there a lot of medium sized ones? Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. It got really. It. I mean, I mean, it spans really the spans the gamut. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, so. Um, not entirely sure, don't really have any advice for you. My <laughs> suggestion would be if you're with somebody, uh -huh. right? You're together. Honestly, the best course of action here, mm -hmm. go shopping together. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's that's the best way to just nip it in the bud. Because let, let's say you come across the one that's an inch bigger yeah. and you're aware of it, mm -hmm. right? Or two inches bigger or whatever, like just enough bits bigger, but like, like it's definitely bigger, but not like a lot bigger, but like, oh. There was a size down that was a little bit closer, but you went with this one, right? Mm -hmm. I think you'd just be like, oh my God, I don't know if I like I don't know if I, the, if I would like that size. And and see, let's play the room a little bit. Let's hear. Cause more than likely, there's gonna be like, try that one. This is a bigger one. If he's in charge. And if he's not in charge, he's gonna say, mm -hmm. oh, no, this she doesn't. I have a question. Gonna, yes. Do <laughs> what do guys? I guess I've never thought about this before. Do guys subconsciously think that their dicks are bigger or smaller than they actually smaller. are? Smaller. I think that I've seen like- a, Really? I've, I have seen a massive study on that. Yeah, huh. like many, many studies. I think dudes are always, not always. I think guys are much more likely to, to think, view themselves as oh, smaller wow. yeah, than they actually are. That's a great study. Yeah. Would love to see the science behind that. Yeah. Well, I think it's it comes down to like one, angles and looking in mirrors uh -huh. versus like looking straight on. And totally. two, just dudes just being like, wildly self-conscious. Right. Oh my God. That is, I'm so glad you knew the answer to that right off the bat. That's so interesting. I read that somewhere. Yeah. No, I believe you. I, yeah. That's kind of like what I was thinking that was going to go. I'm sure it's nine out of 10. That's the, that's the case. And right. then the one out of 10 where it's not, it's like. They just think that they have an elephant trunk down And you're there. like, dude, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Great insight. Um, so this is actually a great question that I don't have much insight on. So great. Um, Jeremy's opinions and advice on corporate world work. Uh, I started my first real job eight months ago. Corporate real world work? Yeah, like what was like? What was it like going into your first like nine to five corporate? -y? Like working at I guess STEM would be the closest thing to a nine to five. Like once uh, you no, I had like like consulting gigs before then. Yeah, but was that as much as nine to five as like an office with like it was like it was certain days? I would segment my like, I, like I would like I be see. with like client A Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and client B like Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, but like. I guess the first time like I had like my, uh, the first time I had like a desk, mm -hmm. eh, I had those even at con like clients. No, but I think that this one, like I think what they're referring to is when you have like a lunch area and like coworkers right. working at desks around you. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's like yeah. that vibe that they're referring to. Uh, and what's my thoughts on it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's weird now. I think, cause like to me, I look back at like the amount of time that I spent so socializing almost with like my coworkers mm -hmm. and colleagues, which is important. And I wish I had a little bit more of it being remote, but like I, if I had the option to go into an office at minimum of three days of the week, maybe even four, I think I would do it. I think so too. I think you, I think you, your work motivation and energy. The other thing is that you spend so much time on the phone and on the computer talking to other people that I'm like, do you even have time to talk to like people in the real world? Well, and that's also like a thing is like when you're, I remember, cause I've been a, in 
tech selling mm. whatever tech company I'm working for for a long time now. And more often than not, there are a lot more people that are not screaming on the phone eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. And so you almost feel like, like back in the day when like me and Jason Zerden, my buddy of mine, who I was like best friends with and still am today, I worked in like a music distribution company. We would just take turns just screaming and pacing back and forth along like the upstairs at every engineer and product and C-suite and everybody else would be like, oh my God, I can't believe he's screaming like that. And they put up with just, just enough because we're the ones that bring money into the business. Mm -hmm. But like, you're like the, like the odd man out here because everybody else at their desk in their cubicle just working and you're over here just like going back and forth and just pacing. So, but you do that in our house though and pace around the house and just scream at people. Right. So why would you want to go into office to do that in front of other people when you can do it in the privacy of your own home? Um, I thrive when- Attention. No, no, that's <laughs> um, not what I was thinking. I thrive um, when I'm doing something good or bad mm -hmm. with other people. Got it. Like I can do, the world's most mundane, miserable, not fun task. Right. If I'm surrounded with people who are also doing that thing. I think I think that's fair. I think yeah. I think a lot of people feel that way. Is and like, I, it's like the group effect. Right. I just I'm down for the cause mm -hmm. if we're all in it together. If I'm by myself and I have only like nine things that are like not that important, but not a giant pain in the ass versus like two or three things that are like, oh my God, that's gonna suck. You can bet those nine things are getting done before the two or three, because I'm by myself. Like right now, right. I work at a company with over 3000 people all over the world scattered. And I'm the one employee in Los Angeles, California. So it's like, it's weird because we have this weird backing of this global massive corporate culture. And I am more or less like, like location wise, very alone. Does it feel soul sucky when you're in an office nine to five? I guess this applies less to over the last like year and a half since so many jobs went to like work from home if you worked in an office culture beforehand. I mean, it's not the office that's gonna be soul sucking because it can be soul sucking to work alone and right. by yourself too. Like to me, it's your team. It's totally your team. It's your team. Cause like it's totally is, if the if your boss respects you mm -hmm. and the people who work with you respect you and mm -hmm. the work people that work or report to you respect you, everything else can fall in line. If one of those situations on your, it's, it's one thing if like the CEO sucks, which sucks, but like if the CEO sucks and your entire team is great, you can figure it out. You might not stay there forever, but like- I just feel like, I feel like so many people don't even ever meet the CEO of companies. Right, exactly. Whereas like if the CEO is, everything's great or whatever, but like your boss sucks or the person who like are working directly across from sucks, your everyday sucks. Your day sucks. Yeah. It's so about who you work. I remember like, even like when I worked at a grocery store, like if my favorite people weren't on shift, like yeah. that shit oh just god. dragged by. It's, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, like I I wish, I hope that we can find a world where there's people who want to go into the office and thrive that way. Same way with like school. I think there's like the idea like that there's one way that everybody learns mm. is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like ridiculous. That's not how the world works. And once you get past degree, whatever, you go out and like, hey, uh, here's the problem, figure it out. However you figure it out, as long as it's right, great. So it's like, I think there should be the world where if you want to go to the office, great. If you don't, great. Like have the option. I feel like the hybrid model is getting really popular. I feel like yeah. a lot of people I've talked to have been like, you have the option to go. I think you have to be in like two days a week or three days a week is like what I'm hearing yeah. from friends who kind of like live in that, live and work in that office uh, culture. And then the other days you can do remote, which I feel like is, I mean, I think it's I think it's a good balance. Yeah, I think it's a good balance. It's crazy that you've never really been into like the nine to five. Like you were as an intern, you were. But I did never, an intern, yeah. But never as like a you never had your own desk and a door. I literally, I went from like I went from like hardcore like ages fifteen to like twenty of like sweat grunt work like right. shitty minimum wage jobs and then to weird entrepreneur youtuber digital influencer job like I, I didn't ever do that like nine to five corporate culture outside of like that one summer of internship where right. i did have a desk from like nine to five and i was like i hate my life uh -huh. um but outside of that yeah I, I went from like zero to 100 and didn't like i didn't really dabble in like the weird nine to five area do you think you ever will no i don't think so wow i i, I just i think i had this conversation with kelsey the other day it's like we both have just like such severe anxiety that the thought of being trapped in a certain location from a certain set trapped. of hours. Yeah. Well, okay. it's like the the pressure to not be able to leave, right? Like obviously if you're super, super ill or like something bad happens, like you can leave. But I mean, that's like the anticipatory anxiety of everything of like, you shouldn't leave. You know what I mean? It's like, it's that kind of like pressure around it where I know that my anxiety would not thrive in that situation where I would wake up and be like, oh my God, like today is a day where I really can't get sick. And then I'd wake up feeling sick and it would just like perpetuate over and over and over again in a nine yeah. to five environment. I mean, I will say being a, like 
I am someone who like as an extrovert, especially at work mm -hmm. and as someone who like, when I get on a call, the reason that I'm usually on that call is to drive some conversation. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like I'm like one part being entertainment, one part herding cats, one part like having a, a commercial business objective, which I thoroughly enjoy. And like some people would just not enjoy having to be the person to lead every conversation. Mm -hmm. but like that keeps things fun for me, whether it's in person or virtual or whatever else. I mean, yeah, that's, I think that's great for you. I would, I would die. I would literally die if I had to drive the conversation. That's, that feels very stressful. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about something a little less, less nerdy. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so you're gonna shit on me for saying I love vanilla because uh -huh. I do love vanilla. But, but I we, love, get, we get, get a little spicy and do French vanilla. I love mint chocolate chip. Oh, love I love cookie chip. dough. Love cookie dough. Uh, cookies and cream. Love cookies and cream. I'm really just like, I'll just go down the Ben and Jerry's menu. Yeah. I don't like chocolate ice cream. Don't love chocolate ice cream either. Like I would eat it like between like a strawberry chocolate, vanilla, like the three originals, oh. I would go strawberry first, vanilla second. Really? No, wait. Yeah, no, wait. Mm, oh, this is hard. Vanilla would be last for sure. Are you kidding? I think I'd go strawberry chocolate vanilla. You're wrong. You're wrong. You have, first off, you're lactose intolerant. You know what, is it the white, the white crust dog owners are screaming? You're both wrong. You don't get it. You're lactose intolerant. You don't get an opinion here. Um. Okay. You always get an opinion. That Thanks, was rude. That's mean. Thanks. I also love um um like birthday cake ice cream cakes. Yeah. Ice cream cakes. Like a Dairy I, Queen. I also love an ice cream cake, but a, a birthday cake you ice cream Dairy flavor. Queen in Canada? Yeah. Okay. Oh, love a blizzard. Love blizzard. The closest Dairy Queen in LA to us is like like forty five miles. Travesty. And it's very very. Sad. I can't wait till we're um like independently wealthy. Don't really need to have jobs anymore. We just start franchises. I want a raisin canes. I want a Dairy uh, Queen. Dairy Queen. Yep. I want. Is that it? Do I want to do well, a Dairy Queen? I would love to do a Chick-fil-A, but like we could be the only Chick-fil-A that supports LGBTQIA+. I feel like they're not gonna go for that franchise side, but yeah, hmm. we could work on it. Hmm. Are we gonna be open on Sundays too? Fuck yeah. I mean, we would have one hell of a business. Are you kidding me? We would be, we could do, we could, oh my God, what about this? We just open on Sundays. I feel like you're not as excited as I am about that. The business would be booming. It's like a cloud kitchen situation. <laughs> We're only open on Sundays. And we only support LGBTQIA+. So you have to be gay. Yes. And you have to be hungry on Sunday. Yes. Sign me up. That's great. I'm in. That is the most, that is in. the most innovative idea I, I've ever had. I don't know, but yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I just had, a, I just had a, a good, what did we just talk about? Go back to like two steps. Um, ice cream flavors, Raising Cane's, um, Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Um, um, oh, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. We did a little backtrack and I'm there now. Uh -huh. um, Outside of LA, one of the questions was one of the most common questions. Two things, two thoughts. One, okay. Um, people were really interested in, in hearing about an episode of comparing American and Canadian differences, which we just live that in reality yeah, on a day to day life. basis. Yeah. Um, but that could that could be that could be a cute little segment that we okay. do in another episode at some point. Yeah. Um, but a common question was, do we see ourselves staying in LA? Yeah. Yeah. I like. There's. The reasons that people leave LA, mm -hmm. what what are those? Oh, oh me, me, right? Choosing me, um, um, for family, for affordability, for new job opportunities, right. For different climates, yeah. Uh, for their loved ones. Great, and I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh -huh. All five of those not applicable for us. Like we are down to like not earn as much or make take as much home with taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, our significant other. Loves California. Mm -hmm. The weather, I don't know what's better. Fire. Like, but okay, but we don't live. And I know I meant, I meant, sorry. When I said fire, I realized that could go one of two ways. There are some I fires. Meant that yeah, there, yeah. there are fires, but also and it's fires already, and like, already, I was, I, I was, I was, I was yeah. ready to combat. I was yeah. like, no, that's, those yeah. aren't in our yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like, <laughs> like we're not in like a high risk area for that. Uh, uh, job wise, we- It's I all here. I don't know what city would be better for either. Like I have so many people I work with in London and Singapore and like, I don't care where they are. They're all like, what's it like living in LA? Or all the jobs. Also, I think about the people that you talk to most regularly and have like the most impactful business. And I feel like they're here. Yeah. I mean, or like, or it's a hub for all those people to come here at some point. Right, like New York is like got their own side with the yeah. finance and ad agency and all, yeah, but like, mm -hmm. no, LA. But also Without like, question. like winter. Yeah, hard pass. I get shit on all the time because I complain about like, I'm cold, but I'm like, Lauren, they're like, you are the most temperature sensitive person I've ever met. Yeah, I know. And so that's why I need to move somewhere where it's not negative 40 bajillion degrees. Maybe San Diego would probably be slightly better. Oh my weather. God, I would, I would thrive in San Diego because it's like 80 degrees every single day. If we figure out how to do it, we'll be in Laguna Beach and 
not talk to anybody ever again by 40. I don't think Laguna is, I'm aligned politically with Laguna Beach. I could figure it out for Laguna Beach. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Um, but, but yeah, I think because we are both only children yep. and our parents are both uh, on the brink of being fully retired. Can we start right there? Just what? a real quick stop. What? Our parents, uh -huh. all of our parents, yes. all three of them yes. <laughs> have the audacity Audacity. Oh, I know it's coming. Gail is gonna be so mad. I'm gonna say it right now. Gail's gonna be, mom, they... mom, 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 mom. Our parents all maintain the concept, the theory, the idea that their future uh -huh. is going to keep them in St. Catharines in Rockford, Illinois, even <laughs> if we have a kid. A spawn. Uh, they're fully retired and they don't have any actual professional obligations in right. these places. Yep. Uh, we would, Literally, if even if we bought them houses here, mm -hmm. I just they they act as if mm -hmm. they're not going to move out here. Their trip, they are okay, going okay, to be out okay. here. Okay, so I think I think here, here's take. here's my here's my hot take. We're getting Donna out here. We're getting Gail out here, and Greg is coming on with. I think I think Donna. I think we can definitely get Donna out here because okay. she's got a close friend circle, obviously. But I think that she is going to thrive being a grandma. Like, I, think I, think, I think I think she's, she's made for it. I think she's made for it yeah. exactly. Like, I think that she is genuinely made for being a grandma. The way that I know that she takes care of your sister Berkeley, and like, I just know that she is going to thrive being a grandma. Donna, my mother. When you think of patience, yeah, she's got it. Oh my god! When it comes to the most mundane, like the the task that everybody else puts off. Oh no worries. I'll just sit down and I'll work away at it. Just she's in it. Also. Jeremy's sister gets her teeth brushed every single night. This is the dog again. Gets her little beard wiped. Mm -hmm. Gets her eye goobies wiped. Mm -hmm. Like what? Like literally wash. Like she Berkeley, washes her face and brushes Berkeley her teeth. Berkeley has better skincare hygiene than Jeremy does. Without question. Yeah, without question. Like it, she's brushing her teeth as often as I'm brushing my teeth. Oh, uh, legitimately, like that is no exaggeration. That is not like there's no dramatics there. My mother mm. will do all the tasks that we would be like, oh my god, that's, I, I dread doing this. Yeah, Donna's thrilled for it. Totally, she's excited. She loves that part of the day, mm -hmm. and she would come over and do that. I, absolutely, Gail. Okay, so here's here's the hot take on on Gail and Greg is that I think my dad would also is also going to thrive okay. as a grandparent. My, my, both my parents are; they really are. But my dad's social life is not as booming. So I saw this on TikTok, but. <laughs> It was it was this skit about how our dads don't have friends. The dads don't have best friends. They don't have friends. They have wives who have husbands. And, and that's kind of where it drops off. And I was, I said yeah. to my mom and I was like, this is totally dad. Like he's got one friend who he golfs with that he reconnected with that I think he went to high school with or something. But he's just like, he's just like a a, a lone, lone, lone wolf. Like he just likes to work on his cars. Like he'll go to a drag race show, like a drag race event by himself and have a great old day. Like Greg thrives. I used to go down to Cleveland um, to work with duct tape. Uh -huh. And so we would drive down Shout together. Out Shout out duct tape. Mm -hmm. We would drive down together and we I'd like- We should have a duct tape sponsor. That's what we should do. Duct tape genuinely At funded tape. my, oh my God, duct tape, it funded my entire year of like 2015. Insane, like-, so, je, like Would be great if they funded 2023. I have probably done over 60 videos for duct tape. What? Yeah. I mean, DIY makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. I yeah. have done, I, I know so much about duct tape. Anyway, so Greg and I would drive down to Cleveland and he would go tour all of the museums, go on all of the submarines. And I'd just be like working away during the day. And then we'd go have dinner. It was a great time. Greg is a, is, a, is a lone wolf and he likes it that way. So I think that I could absolutely persuade my dad. To yeah, I think it wouldn't here. be hard at all. He also is the resident um like snow shoveler and snow blower. Mm, and so like, I sucks. think that he would very much enjoy the uh the climate here. There's no upkeep. There's no upkeep. And also he loves fixing things. And so like, loves. I know- and we love having broken and things. we love having, we don't love having broken things, but we do have broken things here yeah. often. And so I think that he would love to feel needed in a handyman kind of way. We would not have to make much of a stretch to make him feel needed. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh like, my God. Greg, just walk in and just look around. Yeah, We, we need good. something. Yeah. yeah. Like our dishwasher has been out of balance or whatever, like kind of leaning out of where the dishwasher should be for like the last six months, but no one is going to fix it no. until there's like an actual issue. Until that thing no yeah. longer cleans dishes. Right. I mean, and I mean- And we had a little scare last night. We yeah. really did. <laughs> and, and I mean like even, even if it cleaned them half the way, I'd be- Oh I, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely appropriate. Listen, you, you, first round's on you. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get it. Do a little a second, secondary yeah. scrub, yeah.
that's how long I'd wait until that thing. You know what actually happened is that, so when we had the Craftopia viewing party, um, Remy got this incredible cake made that had all this glitter fondant on the outside. Mm. And I'm not kidding. I ran a plate through the dishwasher for the third time today because the glitter icing would not come off. I ended up having to get it's one of those caked like- in, in the- I had to get one of those steel wool scrubbies. Oh, is it caked in the, um, the line? No, 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 I got it out. I got okay. it out. It was just too strong for the dishwasher. Got it. Yeah, the dishwasher couldn't um, combat it. Well, classic um, Thermidor. So, <laughs> it's not a Thermidor dishwasher, is it? Yes. Shut the fuck Our up. Our entire kitchen is Thermidor. Shut the fuck up. It's a Thermidor. The stove, oh, Thermidor, fridge, my Thermidor, God. dishwasher, Thermidor. It's all Thermidor, <gasps> all of a Thermidor. Oh, my nightmare. Oh my God, we need to move immediately. Jesus Christ. Anyway, this back to hot takes. Podcast is sponsored by LG, Samsung, KitchenAid, <laughs> Viking. Literally anyone except for Thermidor. Frigidaire. Um, so my hot take on Gail though. So Gail is gonna be the stickiest, 100%. You think? Yes, 100%. My mom has the most booming social life, the most booming volunteer life, the most booming board of blank, 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 boards of all of the chairs of things, of all of these uh, organizations. Yeah, and Los Angeles could use someone like her. Oh my God, yeah, but she's like, she's just got so many friends. Gail's fucking popular. But she could fly back and visit them. I know, I think they'll do like a bi-coastal thing. Yeah, I think so too. I think a bi-coastal thing will, is, would be more realistic because I, there's just no world where my parents are gonna miss like mega child milestones. No, there's no way. There's no way. There's and, no way. And if, yeah, there's no if, way. if they start to, and Donna moves here, and we just start sending videos of all of us hanging out and enjoying ourselves. Oh my God, yeah, they have FOMO. They have FOMO. They have FOMO. What, what we'll do is we'll hire a professional production crew to come in and be like, capture all the angles that really, and like, we'll just put Sarah <laughs> McLaughlin underneath all of like the, 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 the baby's Sarah first McLaughlin. steps, the this, the that, In the moose bean, moose, all these things. An angel. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I, I, we have a great plan. No, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be totally fine. Um, yeah, you so know we'll what, what else we'll do? What? We'll buy the house across the street mm -hmm. and say we would like you to live there. And if you don't live there, we're not gonna rent it out and make bad financial decisions because we're waiting for you to move. Gail, Gail, that would that would yeah. I think move the needle. I think that would move the needle. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We're still a long way from spawning offspring. Um, and by offspring, I probably mean like one offspring spawning one. Yeah. Yeah, I think just. I'm one. not mad at one. I'm not mad at two. We'll see I, how one goes. One one feels good. We'll see. We'll see how one goes. One feels good. Yeah. 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 So um, it's not coming out of my vagina. No. Nope, so. Nope. No, it's not. So anyway, so stay tuned for that. Um, family stay vlog for, channel. For what? Stay tuned for that. Is that the Discord thing we're doing with the sex tape? Or stay tuned for spawning an offspring in like five years, maybe. Oh. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that's what I meant. And yep. then I was going to say vlog channel coming soon in uh, summer of twenty twenty four. I can't wait to quit my job in tech and start vlogging. And be a vlog channel, yeah. yeah. Just see, oh my God, the Ace Family House went into a full disclosure or whatever. Let me see, how, what was the headline? Foreclosure, not full disclosure. Uh, is that what I said? <laughs> so a lender has foreclosed on the massive LA home of YouTubers, Austin McBroom and Catherine McBroom. This house is just so gaudy. Like it's just so ridiculously massive. Like no one needs a mansion this big. Well, also, it wasn't even one house, it was two houses, right? It was two houses. They demolished both of them and built like a mega mansion, 12,000 square feet. I mean, I guess, I mean, did they have like their warehouse there? No. Okay. It, it, like, you know, did you ever see um, videos of like Kim and Kanye's like weird, creepy, empty yes. white house? Yes. It kind of had like a tackier version of that kind of vibe. Huh, okay. Oh, once again, I just feel bad for the kids. Me too, I feel really bad for I the kids. I just feel bad for the kids. Because you know that they're not setting money aside for the, their college funds in the future. That, that is the least of my concerns. Oh my God, I know, I feel my, so I'm, bad. I'm mostly concerned with their general self, like are, how are you supposed to care for yourself when the people you look, look up to don't seem to care for themselves or you yep. in the public spotlight? Whether Even if they were the best parents in the world behind mm -hmm. like, closed doors and with the cameras off, which I, I don't necessarily think is remotely true. But even if they were, their public like image and perception and shit they're gonna have to deal with before their brains are anywhere near capable of that is a mm -hmm. nightmare. Mm -hmm. I just remember the kids. Yeah, me too. I think it's also too, I, and we've talked about family channels before in the past, but like, I feel so bad for the kids. I, mean, I feel bad for every, every kid that's like subject to like this crazy family vlogger, daily vlog channel yeah. kind of situation. But like, I can't imagine 
if I turned 18 and six years ago, like my family had documented my most awkward stages every single day and the world had watched me grow and up. ran Procter and Gamble ads across it. Yeah, like fuck that sucks. I think about like the photo albums that my family has of my most awkward years. And like, I want those to never be seen by anyone except for family. I would not want millions and millions of people to watch that. And I think it's like, I don't know, it's a fucking weird, it's a weird, yeah. uh, weird situation. What are you gonna do when your kid wants to be a vlogger? How old are they? I don't know. I Eight. don't know. Eight? Yeah. Absolutely the fuck not. Nine. No. 12. No. 13. No. 14. No. 14? No. Lauren. How old are you, when you what grade is that again? Seven, grade seven? No. No, I think it's older. Nine? Than. 14, I think you're in high school. I am. 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, I think yeah, you're yeah, a freshman in high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, so maybe you can vlog in grade nine. <laughs> you can vlog in grade nine, okay? What do you want from me? Eighth grade. No. All the other kids are doing it, mom. No. Mom. No, <sighs> no. Ugh. Go talk to your father, no. I'd say yes. You're gonna be the mean parent, I already put, know it. Put yourself on the internet for everyone to judge. <laughs> and be, see what happens. Just make sure that child. monetization Come to us because you can't sign for that shit yet, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Truly. Uh, okay, here's a riveting one. This one, I think maybe we should end on this one because it's like- Let's do it. The most, yeah. Um, so not a question for the pod, but Moose should be Frankenweenie for Halloween. That's not a question. Oh, did I say last question? Yeah. Uh, so I meant last comment. Okay. Last request. Uh, listen, I'm great. Do you know who Frankenweenie is? From the Nightmare Before Christmas? I, I, don't, I don't, do you remember who Franken, Frankenweenie is? Franken yeah, it's like a little like dead dog. But not dead, undead dog. Frankenweenie literally is Bubbies. Yeah, it's Moose. Look it, that's Bubbies. Yeah, it's Bubbies. That is literally Bubbies. So are we gonna do it or not? What? Are we gonna do that or not? No, he's got a skeleton costume. You know what though? I have seen um, white bull terriers who have, have done, what? I've seen these as well. Yeah, yeah. white bull terriers who do really, really cute Frankenweenie so you can get like What's the- so scary? It's a little scary. I don't like those. It's a little scary. I like cute puppos. Me too. I, I don't like, like scary puppos. Um, like when I see blood and puppos, I don't get like, ooh, spooky. I'm like, is that puppy okay? Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I know. I don't like that. I know. Um, I'm going to New York next week. Yeah, I know. On actual Halloween. And we got a pod swap this week. We got a pod swap this week. There was actually some requests in um, this little free for all that I put on Instagram that they wanted more um, PB Wild Till Nine swappage. Pretty basic Wild Till Nine swapperos. Swappage. Swapskis. Well, swapskis. We're going to their studio. We are, they're coming here and we're going there. Love it. Gonna crush it all in one day. We gonna be tired. Yeah, that second podcast, is that ours? Yep. Fuck. Yep. We're getting the, we're getting the ass end. We're not getting the ass end. We're getting the hysteria at the end of exhaustion. Let's, get so, all, let's just get them both Could drunk. be funnier. It'll be fantastic. Could be funny. It's gonna be fun. No, it's gonna be great. Also, I think, you know, two different energies. Like we're gonna do their studio, have dinner. Right. Take a few drinks. Our studio. Be fantastic. Yeah. I'm excited. It's gonna be great. I just like, I like- um, Nothing can go wrong with a PB WT9 swap. I genuinely enjoy our guest episodes. I know some people are like, oh, it's like, I like it better when it's just you two, mm -hmm. but like, I have a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, with I think Audie, I think we also too have a ton of overlap. So people are gonna be really excited about both episodes. Yeah, I love it. Both I love episodes. it. Um, I'm, thank you so much for the people that smashed didn't push Literally, this, didn't like push this, my whole smashed. body just rejects the word smash. Like smashed thinking about the, YouTube button. the YouTubers that so used to be like, smash subscribing. the like button. If you wanna go throw us a like on Facebook, that'd be pretty cool too, but we'll just stick with fate for YouTube for now. We'll just say YouTube, YouTube's yeah. great. Thank yeah. you so much. Then oddly amount of, there's an odd amount of people who watch our videos on Facebook. Yeah, I know, I'm flattered. Oddly enough. Don't know who that audience is, but thank I you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you the, for the tillies <laughs> over there. I, I feel like they just don't get the same camaraderie sometimes in mm, the comment section. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, there's some other places, but like, it's let's, okay. let's build that yeah, community yeah, too. Thanks guys. thanks guys. Um, Are you gonna miss me next week? Yeah. And uh, if Jeremy and I don't post a cute couple's uh, Halloween costume you know what next week, you know what happened. It's that it is all three of his Squid Game costumes are sitting on a boat in Long Beach. Long <laughs> Everybody Beach. in South America, South Africa. Uh huh. Australia. Yep. And of, of course, Latvia. Yep. Thank you for being the best. And Canada. We'll see you next week. Bye y'all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>